have plans of coming to Ghana or coming to Africa, which we call repatriation? Do you have plans of, on, of, of doing that? Um, aside that, do you have plans of setting up a business or in Ghana whilst you are out there in your country? You still want to set up a business here and let people... Um, let me just we ought to be here. It was great. I want to thank them for this. We shall go on and celebrate event in Ghana. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having right, So thank you for checking in. Put up a comment. Tivet, we'll be talking more about this place very soon. Tivet is technical, well. vocational education. One, one and interesting training. thing is that whatever you see here was being made by the students. So since then, most of my students, when they are applying for school, after the junior or the elementary or the basic level, they go for dressmaking, building and construction, carpentry, electricals, and so forth. And to, and to be honest with you, right now in my village, we have all these trade or skills that are making it happen. One example is the brother that I showed you in one of my videos who is helping or who have given the job to to construct or to cast the uh, cement blocks to build the library so if we hadn't done that and they had gone into school to study any other thing apart from technical or vocational which they will get the skills they will be seated at home waiting to get it um, we call it white color job so the best way to me and to my students and to my community and to my teachers where that let's educate these kids when they are growing up to rather look at going to a vocational school, a technical school to learn a trade. Come in with the idea of setting up your own business. Don't look at coming to work for the government because there's a backlog of unemployed people out there who need job. So if we can make relevant contribution to Africa, then let us bring whatever we have learned from the West, whatever knowledge, whatever skills we have learned from the West. Now, Mr. Simpson is right in what he said in his video, and I was so excited to hear him say that. I've been screaming the same message for years through best practice parenting articles on my blog at tyosolagbad.com slash sdnu com, my blog. But majority of people just refused to listen and kept following the crowd. You know, um, COVID-19 has, however, now woken them up. It's been like a blessing in disguise. The prolonged, prolonged lockdown across societies worldwide has revealed how inadequate our conventional schooling system has, is in preparing learners as well as even their teachers for the real world. Uh, what best illustrates this is that many school teachers having no reliable income earning skills to fall back on, have now begun learning and using market relevant vocational skills to earn income in the absence of regular salaries, especially those in the private sector. Now, Elon Musk, somebody I believe many of us know, but we know him more for the hype that has to do with his achievements and all of that. One thing many people don't pay attention to is what he says about his employment policy, his recruitment policy. Um, as one of the world's leading minds and most successful persons, he continues to make job offers in his company, saying he does not care if the applicants did not even finish high school or secondary school. As long as they have the skills to solve his problems, he encourages them to apply. For your information, he's not alone. There are many CEOs that are doing that, even in Silicon Valley in America. Google and IBM are just two examples who say you do not need a college degree to, to work with them. Now, the following quote drives home the point perfectly. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. I'm going to read it again. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Think about that. Uh, the quote is credited to a gentleman called Alvin Toffler. I've researched him. Um, he died in 2016. He was born in 1928. And uh, he was regarded as a, referred to as a futurist, known for his works discussing modern technologies, including the digital, digital revolution and the communication revolution, with emphasis on their effects on cultures worldwide. 
like I said, think about what that quote implies. Now, my white paper tells you more. I wrote a white paper in 2018 uh, titled, um, Schooling is a Means to an End and Not an End in Itself. But another title I like that I believe gets more attention for it is, Why I Withdrew My Kids from Formal Schooling for Vocational Education or why I refuse to let my kids have the same kind of education I got. Uh, decision, th this is an excerpt I'm going to read out to you. I just want you to listen. Decision makers in government want to fulfill electoral jobs, cre 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 job creation promises they made. But most settle for giving jobs in the civil service, which are never enough. It baffles me that they cannot see that it's better to get the unemployed to become self-employed or business owners. Businesses in the USA and even the American government have been studying the amazing German model of training its workforce, which has enabled it to maintain one of the lowest unemployment rates in the world. The model accords equal respect and recognition to persons who acquire vocational skills as compared to college graduates. In other words, whether you have a vocational skill based education or you went to university, they treat you the same, they pay you well either way. Right, and that's very significant. Now, if it is to work, formal schooling must provide real-world relevant education. In other words, education that is useful and productive and else enables you to support yourself financially. It should equip learners with the ability to function in society as competent, independent, income-earning adults. And that includes making them able to flourish without needing to seek paid employment. You should have a choice not to sit down at home and wait for jobs like Simpson was saying. My experiences convince me I must empower my kids as early as possible in life to know how to make money and to not need a job to achieve success in life. Okay, so that's an excerpt from the book. It's available for download. All you have to do is fill the form on my website. Just go, you can even send me an email through tayo at tksol.com. I'll send you the form to fill and it comes to you automatically as a download link. All right, what you have here is a screenshot from a gentleman, Memnon Uzan, who shares a very interesting example of how we have a rich history of vocational skills usage. So the story there, uh, it's quite clear. And it's, it actually, what he explains there about the history of how we in Africa taught the white people to make soap, for instance, confirms what Fela said many years ago which I'm going to show you in the next slide. And these are some of the examples you can give young Africans to inspire them to embrace vocational, skill, vocational skills acquisition and usage as being worthwhile. You know, many of them currently think hunting for white collar jobs is better. But the truth is, Western education trained colonized Africans to focus on knowledge and memorization at the expense of honing our creative thinking and craftsmanship, you know, which our ancestors excelled at. Uh, and that's an, uh, the reason why our works are kept in the European museums today. You know, colonial education made us grow up thinking they, they taught us, thinking uh, they taught us to make things when it was actually the other way around. Uh, so it's uh, important that we teach our young people to realize this. Uh, listen, to the, listen to and read the lyrics from uh, Fela's Parambulator. You see them on the, on the screen. Uh, briefly, he explains the deficiency of the West uh, certificate-based education in, in, his, uh, in his song, noting that um, it teaches nothing that benefits the learners and only making you a certified slave. And it's true. Ah, my father, your father, African fathers must start to work at the age of 20. Comfort, success, riches are all his targets. Parambulate, then Parambulate. every morning, Parambulate. six in the morning, Parambulate. going to work, Parambulate. six in the evening, Parambulate. coming back home Parambulate. every month, small loose salary Parambulate. for 55 years, Parambulate. him go tire, Parambulate. if him no tire, Parambulate. them go tire them, them go dash them, one in gold wristwatch, 55 years service, Parambulate. all in property, Parambulate. one old bicycle. Parambulate. As him go to school before, no solution. Them go teach him plenty things, no solution. Them go teach him plenty English, no solution. Them not teach him nothing for himself, no solution. 
Them go give them certificate To go carry file for office Them go give them certificate To make them certified slave Them go give them certificate To make them civil servant Them go teach them for them school That Mungo Park discovered River Niger I say when Mungo Park him reach the river Niger Now African people now them show him the way You see, he for the parambulate and for still day He for the parambulate and for still day He for the parambulate and for still day He no discover Now him right and He right and for them He no right and for us Your town, those colonial schools from the London. I'm telling.